I am Jeff Foxworthy and welcome to Gamekeeper Podcast. If you want to learn more about farming for wildlife and habitat management, then buddy, you are in the right place. Join the Gamekeeper crew direct from Mossy Oak Land Enhancement Studio as they discuss the latest wildlife and habitat management practices, news, and of course, hunting. There's no telling what you'll learn, but I'm going to tell you, I bet it's interesting. Enjoy. We're live in three, two, one. Oh my goodness, Lanny. Hey, welcome everybody. Here West we are. Point, Mississippi. It's October and there is a little rain on the horizon. Barely. I don't I don't like you talking about it because it's it's so a, a remote of a chance that I don't want to talk about. <laughs> 35% for Friday. Yeah, mine's not saying that. Yeah, so what my, is your my, $20 my app? My $20 say? web app. We need a, you know, we need a... Uh, we need an app sponsor we need here. A, we need a weather app the, sponsor. Somebody else, Richie, make a note. Let's call the weather channel and see if we can yeah, work so with them. Let's see here what the uh, my $20 app says. Ooh, it actually increased to a 40% chance late tomorrow. And then next week, it's got a 48% chance. Here we go. Yeah, we, we need it. We need we to go bad. install an irrigation system somewhere, oh and I guarantee gosh. you it'll rain. Do a rain dance or something. Yeah. Yep. We've been doing those. It not worked out. No. Boy, it's been dry. And but. It, it's been. It, 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 it is. October, it, it's kind of like a page turns. And uh, so, guys, uh, let me just go ahead. I've, y'all heard it, but you're, you heard his voice here a second right. ago. So today, we're going to talk about squirrels. One of my favorite subjects. And we, there it is. There it is. We've got a guy <laughs> sitting on the couch, Jeffrey Wood, who's from Stringer, Mississippi. Oh, yeah. He's oh, uh, the metropolis yeah. of Stringer, Mississippi. West Point's even bigger than that. He makes think, squirrel calls. He, <laughs> he makes all sorts of stuff. But he has had the world champion squirrel dog multiple times, the state champion squirrel dog multiple times. He, In multiple states. Uh, we've been all over the country squirrel hunting. So it's, uh, I was telling Bobby earlier, I've squ- squirrel hunted or still hunted or dog hunted everywhere from Texas all the way to the East Coast, all the way to Michigan, Delaware, all up through there. So it's uh, been a part of my life since I was a kid, I guess. That's that's how I got introduced to hunting with squirrel hunting. That's what we did. Yeah, um, yeah, no, no doubt about it. That was the first learns thing. you to be a better woodsman. Yeah, yeah. read compass such yeah. as that. You see on my wrist, I keep one there all the time. Yeah, and you learn stalking skills. I mean, yeah, you really makes you a better turkey hunter. It really does. And deer hunter, you know. Well, we're gonna get him to teach us about how to call squirrels, and then he's gonna talk about hunting behind a dog. And we're just going to spend the whole episode talking and about squirrels. we're going to talk about camo and squirrels. How important camo is. How important is oh, yeah. camo. We do it full yeah. dress, just like you turkey hunt. But he sits on a dove stool. Yeah. Oh, that's a pretty good idea. Now, when we was kids, we'd sit on the ground and lay down almost. And I've only seen a couple people do this, but we would lay down. My uncle showed us this and cross your leg like that and lay down on your back. And you'd use that for a rest for your oh. rifle so he wouldn't see you or anything. You'd lay flat almost on the ground. And we'd kill six or eight squirrels out of one hickory nut tree doing that. Laying flat. So you wouldn't be seen, you know. you just lay flat. Hmm, Use a sense. CB-22 short and yeah. like a little rifle like y'all was talking about earlier. Just lay down. Use your gun and lay down like that. And so he's throwing his, his like he's, uh, not crossing your legs, but like you're sitting with your yeah. ankle on your knee. Yeah, kind of so like that. Use, use it for a brace. A and hmm. My uncle showed us that. He was in the military. Yeah. Um, and then I seen another older man when I was – in Tennessee, he did that, but he was from like North Carolina. But he had squirrel dogs, and Mac English was his name. He's a real nice fellow. He's passed on now, I think. But he was um he's the only other person I've seen do that. And he told me he was in the military, and that's where he kind of learned it from. Never thought about that, Bobby. You'd probably go to sleep if he was out there. I later, probably would. Right? Yeah, I'd be worried about a snake crawling up. <laughs> yeah. on that's what. That's what. That's why I'm on the dust stool now. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get up quick enough. No, no more. Uh-uh. that <laughs> yeah. rolling around and jumping up ain't good anymore. Jeffrey, if you'll just hold tight just for a second, okay. we got a couple things. Uh, the Lenny, I'm looking at you. Dudley, you hadn't said a word yet. He's uh, cramming. He's cramming. Yeah. So uh, blood on the biologic. It, what, what's everybody seeing? I heard Jason Hart killed him. Yeah. It Hadn't seen it. But I just saw it. Got a crab claw on his right beam. Mac, do you know any details about that? No, I think he was with Ben Rising, wasn't he? Well, that explains a lot. That'd be, be a big Ohio deer. <laughs> ah. Yeah, it was a big one. It was a good deer for sure. How about that? I, I just, know you know, you, you, you think deer. turkey when you think Jason Hart. So I didn't even know he deer hunted. 
Just <laughs> so, Lanny, you had uh, somebody somebody that you wanted to. Uh, oh, yeah. Speaking of squirrel season, yeah, squirrel season kicked off this weekend. And uh, my little nephew, Cash, got on there and started chasing some uh, squirrels uh, in the Tom Bigby bottom right there and got a handful of them. So. Bushy you. tails. Bushy tails. Yeah. That's right. I thought it was I'm, quite relevant for this time. I'm very much looking forward to getting out and chasing some. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Mac, you got anybody you want to add? Well, not blood on the biologic yet, but uh, one of our customers with biologic, Ethan Lindsay, just north of here in Booneville, has endurance radish that's already shin high and it's gotten one rain. Planted Ooh. at the end of August, got one rain, germinated it, oh. and it's a, the new radish, drought tolerant radish, is already shin high. Is that the picture you showed me yesterday? That it stuff is. looked good. They really do. Yeah. They really do. I wish I'd decided to plant early instead of wait. Yeah. I was just, I mean, it, it, we talk about the drought tolerantness of, of that seed. And I mean, that's a prime example. I mean, it germinated. He said he's been getting a heavy dew four, five days a week. And he attributes some of the moisture to that. But I mean, no rain except for germinating rain. Enduro radish. Wow. Yeah. So that's, that, you know, we ought to post that on the Instagram. On the old internet. If we would. Somebody. W, 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 interweb. Interweb. To Make prove that somebody down. has a food plot this year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Somebody <laughs> actually has a food plot in Mississippi this yeah. year. Yeah. So, Blood on the Biologics brought to you by LS Tractors. Uh, Landed that camo tractor. Where is the tractor? Yeah, I, I think it's we're about 10 days away. By the time this podcast. Uh, we well, might have it. Yeah, it well, we might be three or four days away from having it. So, is there a waiting list already on who's going to use it? I hope not. Hmm. That. that you know what? I hadn't even thought about that. Like, I bet it's let's just happen. get it here first. Let's see what happens. So, look, one other – this guys, y'all pay attention to this now. Uh, we are about – in honor of squirrel season, one of our sponsors, Springfield Armory, now has a bolt-action twenty two rifle. It's a model 2020, and we're going to give one away for, for some lucky listener. We're going to put a Leopold 2-7 to seven rimfire scope on the top of that Good thing. grief. Oh, that's that a sounds like driver. a rig now. So today is like, uh, what is today? October 4th? Today is so, October 4th. So when this, <laughs> when this drops, think about this. McKellar said that they can go to mossyoakgamekeeper.com, uh -huh. and there'll be a link. It'll say podcast giveaway. And Sign they'll click on right that there. and just do whatever it tells you to do. Nice. And, and some lucky person is going to win this rifle. Cool. Are, are are we eligible? Probably uh, not. Probably it's a, not. It's a slick not rifle. Cool. It really is. It's, so it's I'd, got a ten twenty two magazine on it, so you don't have to worry about, you know, if you lose your magazine, you, you can go get you one. an old Ruger yeah. magazine. They're everywhere. Yeah. You can find them in about every store you go to nowadays. Yeah. 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 They got those high capacity magazines too, don't they? Oh, yeah. So nice. I think we call that a banana clip. <laughs> so I think it's this not a thing, clip. It's a magazine. It's a magazine. I think this thing uh, is that's about a nine hundred dollar value. Wow, that's a rig. Yeah, squirrels like, better look out. Whoever owns that one, they're gonna be a bunch of them get shot with that. Yeah. Sounds like. So you can see it it's, if you go to Springfield Armory and then look for the model twenty twenty with the new twenty two. Wow, cool. Is this yeah, the first but, rifle they've made? Twenty two. First twenty two rifle. That's right. They make some. Uh, AR framed rifles. Oh, gotcha. so, so, yep. All right. So, Mac, is that all the business we got right there? I think that business. carries us through. Uh, Lanny, Bobby, we, we hate we missed you at the Rick and Bubba show. Yesterday. Yeah, I don't know what happened to my invite. I mean, are y'all that embarrassed to carry me in public? Let me just tell you, that was a long drive over with Dudley spotting trees left and right. It, yeah, it, it, turkeys out in fields, and it, 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 it was a long drive. Well, I listened in. It sounded like I had a really good time. We did. It went fast. It did. I yeah. was real impressed with Rick and Bubba. Oh, that's good. Cool. I mean, they had homemade biscuits and gravy for what? us. What? Yeah. Y'all didn't tell me y'all were eating, too. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Did, did, didn't Dan's wife do that or something? She, she sure did. did. It was delicious. Mm. Yeah. Everything was good. The, the, yeah. the, the, the Rick and Bubba show was very cordial and friendly to us, welcoming us in there. And uh, the, the whole Moultrie staff uh, was there. It was How just, was their and, studio compared to our studio? Oh, man, theirs was luxurious. It was. It's hard to say. How were their producers, it, Bobby? They were on the spot. Nobody fell asleep. They were running <laughs> around. Surprisingly, after but, eating all that biscuit. Yeah. yeah. Bring hey, us look, water. All right there. I know. Did y'all get to spin the wheel? No. 
No, no wheel spinning. They probably didn't have as many wires as we have. Though. No, probably don't. They don't uh, have we probably have, have more tape. wires. We'll Bubba more. requested to be in the Gamekeepers magazine as a model. Like, well, we can do like that. Like on, on a four-wheeler throwing seed out or something. So We can make that happen. Yeah. yeah. Rob, don't you think we can make that happen? A thumbs up. <laughs> thumbs yep. up from Rob over there. Okay, one more thing. Dudley had asked to review a movie, and uh, he wanted to review Barbie, and I'm going to say no. We're not gonna do that right now. So let's move right on. Jeffrey Wood, let's turn our attention to you. Tell us just a little bit more about yourself, please. Yeah. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Wood. I grew up in uh, South Jasper County, which is uh, Stringer, Mississippi. Um, grew up hunting. Um, my uncles took us, my dad, when we were kids, squirrel hunting, where it be dogs or steel hunting, uh, coon hunting, such as that. Wasn't many deer back then. Um, we just kind of learned how to hunt and stalk and sneak up on stuff, how to read sign in the woods where you see squirrel cuttings, uh, hog signs such as that, you know, and it just makes you a better hunter. Uh, I don't see that in a lot of young kids nowadays. They don't get out and their parents or grandparents don't care them that much like we did. It was a big day when squirrel season opened up. It was on. There was some stuff going to happen that day. <laughs> How many squirrels you typically kill in a year? Uh, this past year, me and a friend of mine, uh, we take some people, but we killed a little over 600. Mm, wearing them out. Now, that's still hunting and with a dog, so throughout the whole season. Uh, now, when I was really mad at them years ago, I would kill over 1,000, me and a friend of mine, and then we'd have carry people, game fish commissioners, different people throughout the yeah. hunting season, and you'd kill. Uh, now, we sell the tails I've heard y'all mention on here, the maps. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had a lady on there one day. She told me, she said, you must be really mad at some squirrels as many tails as you sent us. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's always fun. Carrying kids and stuff like that. And introduce them to the wildlife and hunting. I, I can't think of a better way to in- introduce a kid to the outdoors myself. You know, we talk about it all the time that we, that a lot of times now we just kind of skip right over the squirrels and yeah. go straight go to sitting straight in It's in kind a of a lost line. art, really. It really is. You know, um, as I see... We learned how my uncles and my dad would show us how to read compasses, and I guess that's why I keep one on my arm all the time now. Walking and going back to the truck or something, you just kind of look at your arm. There's just there's so many more opportunities to learn when you're you know with a parent or a friend and you're walking through the woods quietly. Uh, you know what kind of tree is this? What kind of track is that? Yeah. You know what kind of turd is this? <laughs> and and as opposed to, and I'll just say it, you know, walking straight to a deer stand in the dark and then walking out on the exact same trail. Yeah, they don't um, really learn anything in a shooting house. Um, most of these kids go nowadays to granddaddy or daddy fix a food plot for them. They go sit in the shooting house, play on the phone. Yeah. They don't go out and learn the deer trails that might come in there, where the deer might come from or, or even stuff like that. Now, I mean, I, it's it's great that everybody's getting out there, whether they're sitting in a shooting house or, or squirrel hunting. You know, they're You know, you can learn deer hunting. You can learn going out and checking cameras. And, you know, my son likes doing that That's more than actually That's exciting to kids because they get to see those deer or, you know, any other kind of wildlife tracks and stuff like that. They learn a lot. Uh, besides so if, sitting on the phone, you know, in the house. But So if you're going to go squirrel hunting Saturday, are you planning? Uh, you're planning that out, and you gonna get there before daylight, or are you gonna walk in there a little yeah. later? Or what's what's your I strategy? Usually, typically, I get there. I kind of know some areas. I usually go where food trees are. Um, we go in the Delta a lot, wild pecans, shumar oaks, such as that, and, and kind of know general area where you want to start. Uh, I get in there before daylight and kind of sit down, let everything get quiet, and usually you'll start seeing limb shake most time before daylight. I've seen them feed at night, like and on a moonlit night, they'll feed at night. So once you're you're sat down and kind of the woods come awake and you're seeing some activity out there, do you do you sit in that same spot or do you start making moves? I kind of start moving. Mm-hmm. Um, I slip, me ease around. I sit there a little bit, but most time I'm slipping. I got full mask on, just like a turkey hunting gloves. Bottom land, no doubt. Oh yeah, oh, and yeah. you don't. Because squirrel's a pretty savvy little fella in the woods. You know, he can see your face or see your hands move a lot, you know, tops of your hand or your nose or something, face. And I just get camoed out. A lot of people kind of laugh at me sometimes because the way I do it, but I come out with a bag full of squirrels every time and they, they kind of scratch <laughs> yeah, in their head yeah. a lot of times. I wondering what that? I. Yeah, who's <laughs> laughing now? Yeah. <laughs> I'm eating squirrels and you eating tail only on one. So, so you'll slip up on a tree and then you'll set that dove stool up and sit down on it. Yeah, Did you have a snake? Of, Did you have a snake encounter? Yeah. Uh, snakes don't really bother me, but I've have 
sit down by, I like to sit by oak tree where they got them big roots. Oh, on yeah. It. Yeah, you sit there and yeah. kind of be quiet. Mm-hmm. But I sat down one day and I was sitting there and I just kind of felt like something was watching me, you know, and I'm kind of <laughs> looking around, you know, kind of looking around and I kind of hear something Uh-oh. like that. Hello. And I looked over about where that camouflage bag is and there was a, a cotton mouth sitting there yeah. and he was rattling his tail on them leaves. Yeah. And you talking about a fat boy doing some moving? I come up. Come on by there. <laughs> and when I come, I kind of rolled over and flipped. Kind of come up on my butt. Kind of had the gun like that with that. He come out of them roots after me. I don't know. I guess it might have had little ones or something around there or something. I was kind of close to a slough. And I just. Yeah. Kind of hip shot him. <laughs> but I was kind of. Instinct kinda, shot. Yeah. Self defense more than anything. <laughs> but since, since then, go ahead. No, it's just interesting how those snakes, even. Non rattlesnakes rattle their tail. They yeah. shake their tail when they're just a little there. warning. Yeah, just a little warning. And you'll see that yeah, oh, white yeah. mouth, you know, mm-hmm. uh, give away. Uh, that's a hot mouth. mouth. Uh. <laughs> uh, so, so you so you have a folding dove stool. Yeah, just just a little old cheap folding dove stool, not easy around. You can put it over your shoulder, you know. You can slip and have your gun on your side, kind of ease along. You find you see you some. I kind of sit down and get my squirrel barkers out and. Go yeah, to so work on. Question. So you get like within what a hundred yards of them? Nah, fifty to seventy-five. To probably. 20, 50, so you're 75. just you're you're looking, you're listening for noises, yeah. cutting, and cutting chattering. and barking, and carrying on, and you'll see limbs and whatever shake, and just kind of because most time wherever that dominant feed tree is, those squirrels are going, all of them's going to go in, you know back and forth across there, um, and I try to get in between there a lot of times and catch them on the way back and forth and bark at them and call to them um I, you know like I'm, I'm thinking like a deer hunter I, I like to know what the thermals are doing and the wind and all of that but uh like as a turkey hunter i like to be out of the sun so yeah. I'll, I'll often in the morning try to park to where the the sun is going to be at, at my back when yeah I, that's kind of what we do you don't want to do with squirrels yeah kind of similar you just don't want to you know, be facing the sun because it's going to, when you raise your gun up a lot of times, it's just coming up above them trees. It's going to knock your eyes out. Mm-hmm. So we kind of generally get where it's kind of to your side or to your back. Your daughter's been begging you to hunt since her little brother shot the big eight last year. You've ran a fire, dissed the fields, got stuck, got unstuck, planted food plots, fertilized, and prayed for rain. You moved trees, limbed roads, even bought one of those fancy cell cameras. So what's your excuse? LS Tractor. Moultrie was first in feeders since 1979 and is the leader in total game management. They're taking feeding to another level with the new Ranch Series line of durable and versatile feeders perfect for both wildlife and domestic livestock. So Dudley, you can feed your goats. Whether you're a deer hunter, a hobby farmer, a land manager, or a rancher, Moultrie has you covered with several kit options including a rotating auger, broadcast, or a gravity kit. And these feeders are 300 or 450 pounds. They're big feeders. All right, so guys, Moultrie is offering our listeners a 15% site-wide discount at MoultrieFeeders.com. Use code Mossy Oak with a capital M, Mossy Oak at MoultrieFeeders.com and get that 15% discount. Come in there early morning, kind of got settled, seen some squirrels, got 50 to 75 yards of them. I'm interested in this calling. The key, key um, cackle fly down. You, I mean, what you put on them once you once you start. But we make these little calls, and I've always been interested in game sounds, all kinds. Yeah, but squirrels is something I really love. But generally, with these barkers, you kind of make you a little big red like that. Uh-huh. And I've learned over the years, if you pop it like that with your hand, uh-huh. it pops more. If you use the fat or meaty part of your hand there and kind of cup it, and then too, if you hold it out here, it's kind of a different sound. I'm going to do it, and you'll hear what I'm talking about. But then if you hold it close to your body, he can't see your hands moving, and you. Sound like a squirrel. That is legit. It kind of muffles it down a little bit, but it makes it sound so real. If somebody hears me do it in the woods, they swear it's a squirrel. Oh, yeah. I've had people come to me. Yeah. Uh, You know, we hunt public land a lot. But once they do that, and you get them to answer you, 
So you, with that bark, you're just trying to get him to bark back. Yeah, you. and you kind of locate. Most of the time, you're gonna see a squirrel. He's gonna be in the crotch of a limb or mm-hmm. tree because he's scared of a hawk and hoot owl is gonna get him. Mm-hmm. And you'll see his tail go to shaking, and generally you'll hear him do this. Mm-hmm. And I start slipping on him, man. If he's a little bit further out, then I want to try to shoot him. I like shooting a twenty-two, but sometimes you got to use shotguns. According to how thick the leaves and timber and stuff is. So you're more or less locating them and then moving on. Yeah. Okay. And then and then a lot of times I can call them, and I've had an outdoor rider with me a couple times, and he got kind of scared because I called him down a tree about where your deer head is mm-hmm. there, and that squirrel was just raising sand. He was like, shoot it, shoot it, shoot it, because he was scared <laughs> he was going to jump on it. <laughs> so let's talk, let's talk about that. those motions you just went through there so people listening can understand. Yeah. The meaty part of your hand yeah. is like, like the – where your, your fingers attached to the palm. palm. Yeah, where it's thick. You okay, know what so that's what you're hitting. The... Yeah, because I'll show you what I'm talking about. If you hit it with that end of your finger, here how it pop. But if you do it with this, yeah, it's it has sharp. more realistic yeah. sound to it uh, versus hitting on the end of your finger. It, it pops too much. To me, I'm all crazy about animal sounds, so I kind of... You want it right. Play with different that. things right. to make it sound more realistic. And he's got a great video on his youtube page that explains all this to a t y'all ought yeah. to check out isn't uh, it swamp boys outdoors swamp boy custom calls swamp, swamp boy, boy custom, custom calls. calls yeah um and i make a little skinning device a little rack thing we make we skin them on and stuff so it's so so let, let's uh now that richie's got the mics all up adjusted okay. there let's go through Way a go, call richie. in sequence one time and like i said if you see him out in the woods or you see limb and you'll hear him barking hickory nut trees and stuff Generally, a squirrel, he's not going to eat no big acorn. He's looking for something small, mm-hmm. like a pin oak, water oak, such as that. Got it. Um, nothing like a white oak or anything, but wild pecans over in the delta, you can wear them out. But I generally see them, maybe hear them bark or something, and I slip in and just sit down on that dove stool and just wait a minute, let everything settle down. Because you, dry as it is, you're going to make racket this time of year. I don't mm-hmm. care who you are. And I can slip about as good as anybody, but you're going to make a little racket. And generally, you sit down, just kind of wait a minute, and I'll just, and I hit him like that. And when you hear him, generally he'll bark back or you'll hear one, and they'll be, once one starts, they'll start answering one another. And if, if you don't watch it, you'll be surrounded by them sometimes. But I can sit there and keep aggravating them. And they'll either come out on the end of a limb looking for you, or he'll come over in the tree where you at. Mm-hmm. What uh, do you think that sound is saying? I think it's just like, hey, I'm over here. What's going on? And and they they I feel like they like deer or anything. They have a voice of their own, mm-hmm. and they know who's in their area, kind of. Huh. And they say, yeah, there's an old stranger over there, old boy trying to slip in and get my girls. And they they the males are real territorial like yeah. that. They'll generally when you kill one and he comes to you, I think it's a male most of the time when I kill mm-hmm. him. Up in his turf, man. Yeah. Uh-uh. Trying so to get what, my oh, girls. No. <laughs> and then and then that other noise you made. Um, Let's go over that. Now, generally, when you hear them do this, it's like where they kind of seen something. It's To me, that's what I think it is. They kind of seeing something, then they kind of checking one another almost. And you'll... I have seen them do that to deer so many yeah. times. Mm-hmm. And you, generally, you'll see their tail do mm-hmm. that, but they'll be in the crotch of a tree because they scared of a hawk and a hoot owl is going to get them now we've talked about this before and, and i think i brought this up and y'all you were like huh i don't know but and so yeah i think you can validate this so the squirrel is actually twitching his tail just like you were talking about for avian predation because mm-hmm. what he's doing is he's hoping it'll see his tail and kind of swoop down at his tail and not yeah. his body and not his head yeah no please no. I, I think i think he it's can't kind of the, it's just a reflex he can't control no I mean, no it's it's it's, it's, twitching. A, it's kind of it's like, a defense mechanism yeah, kind of like i'm trying to think what else it is it does that but they they do that so it skulk or who when i scratch my dog's it? back his back legs yeah, yeah, well, that's different <laughs> <laughs> that's totally different. That's different. <laughs> uh, but he does that so that you know he can show other girls what he looks like, and then also if a um, hawk or hoot owl something like that is coming yeah, at him, so he's gonna go above his head and he'll generally run in a hole. I'll be. I'll miss him. This is a complex world these squirrels live in. Oh, it's it's pretty neat, but like, you know I enjoy it. But we try to show kids and young people how to do it. Do you remember back years ago 
Lanny, we've talked about this. There was a call that came out called a Mr. Squirrel. I had one. I it thought was I was going to kill every squirrel in Mississippi. And, and didn't it, kill him once. No, nah, I blew on that thing for like three years. <laughs> you probably tore your lips <laughs> yeah. up. Boy, it was a little disc with a hole in it. I yeah. think they probably still sell them. Yeah, oh, they do. Yeah. But uh, generally, when you're doing that, most people would cut a limb and blow on that, and it's the sound of a baby squirrel. Ah. And it's going, wee, wee. Or either when the hawk has got him, and you brush that limb on the ground so it imitates a hawk or something's wings flopping. Well, I was doing it completely wrong. Yeah, you just you just whistling. <laughs> so it seemed like that'd make every squirrel in the world hide. Well, it, it does. It throws an alarm out, and you'll hear squirrels all around you. And when they do that, and then a minute or two, I've seen it. I've done it myself, but they just hide. And then you sit there 30 minutes, so forth, something comes back out. Yeah. It's uh, more or less like telling everybody, hey, it's a hawk over there. Don't be coming out. So hmm. are, are, there, uh, are there other calls that you can that, – that you need to be a, able to – not really. Use? That's just generally that what we use. Um, just more or less locate, and you can it, play with them a little bit. Certain ones of them is going to come to you. Mm -hmm. Just like a deer when you're hunting, you know. you gonna Some deer you grunt to, he ain't going to come to you. The next one's going to come running wide open. Hmm. Especially when they're rutting. You know, that's when they really get, like, first of December. I tell you what, he sounds just like a squirrel. Yeah, are they more vocal during the rut? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They'll be generally multiple squirrels in a tree. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, but by then we're getting into dogs. But what, uh, when the leaves come, what's off. one of your favorite feed trees? Like you know the what's well, going most... to where you hunting at? Like where I live in Jasper County, which we hunt in the Benville National Forest. That's where I grew up hunting. It's uh, generally pines, and, but we generally look for pin oaks or water oaks or hickory nuts. Uh, first of season, you are looking for hickory nuts, pine cones a little bit. They still shredding them a little bit, but mostly hickory nuts and. Through the years of hunting there, I know where the hickory nut ridges and stuff are, and generally hit them first, and then go down into the bottoms where the water oaks and stuff is. Is that hickory like a number one preferred food oh, on yeah. squirrels? Especially early season, you know, because they they cutting that, getting that mass out of the middle. Yeah, that's a lot of work. Have you ever yeah. tried to get into a hickory nut? It's not easy. Uh -uh. A good it, hammer is about the only way you can get in. It. Yeah. <laughs> What are they doing to the pine cones? Are they getting a seed? It's out? a little bitty seed in there. Dudley knows what I'm talking about. It's kind of flat, almost like a BB. You'll see them come out of there and twirl to the ground. But that's all they eat. And they 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 focus on them when the pine cones are still green Real before green. they dried up and opened out. Yeah, usually September and the first October. Then they done with that. But that's got to be a bitter, <laughs> a bitter thing. Yeah. Mm, wow. Like pine tar on it. So you're down there. So in your squirrel hunting career, you've carried governors and wildlife commissioners. You've hunted all over. And, and you're down there hunting on public ground. Hey, do you ever, as a squirrel hunter, you're slipping in there, do you ever encounter a deer hunter and y'all ever have a conflict? Well, I, a couple of times, but I've had some of them tell me they're going to shoot my dog. And I explained to them that uh, I'm sponsored by people most of the time to give me shells. <laughs> and, uh, it'll get hot in that summit tree stand with them high brass number fours coming up there because uh, they, they think you see a dog that's going to run a deer right. these dogs are not going to run a deer because most time we got enough electricity on them you can turn him around a couple trips to the woods when they're young dogs and you don't have to fool with a deer and i break them i got a training pen thing we set up it's about an acre and then i got one or four acres but we generally break them before you go to the woods so is there, I mean, I heard you said, so when the leaves fall off the trees is when you really start hunting with the dogs. Yeah. And is there a, a specific breed of dog or is it? Well, the ones we fool with is original mountain curs and mountain fast. Mm -hmm. uh, they, some people hunt with hounds. I, that's how we started. We had coon dogs and we had one that with tree squirrels. You know, when we was kids, my dad was carriers. Mm -hmm. um, I got a coon dog we picked up a couple weeks ago. What's his name? Deputy. Deputy. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, is he a blue tick? What is he? Oh, man, he's a black and tan. Oh, you ain't got much of a coon dog in. I don't guess so. I don't even know what a good coon dog is. You need you a blue tick or a walker. Well, he looks he looks like a coon dog, and man. <laughs> you got ears about that long. Yeah, he does. He's well, entertaining. I'm I'm just kind of interested in how, you, you know, I keep hearing you talk about the Bienville National Forest, that's a yeah. big place. Yeah, it's yeah. like 180,000 acres, but there's like... So it's not three... like he's giving a spot away. I don't. No. We don't need any bad reviews here. No. Yeah. But we, we've we hunted all over it, and there's several 
uh, management areas inside of that too. So mm-hmm. some of it's just national forest, some of it's WMA land, but it's mm-hmm. all inside that Bimble National Forest. And we hunt in the Delta a lot, Delta National, Panther Swamp, places like that. So can you take us through the basics of, of you know, getting your dog started with squirrels? Um, generally, we start them when they eight, ten weeks old. So I'll start playing with them with a squirrel tail on a fishing pole uh, and kind of bounce it around, playing with it, and then I'll run it up on a tree. And I I got some now that's less than a year old, and they started pretty good. So, And, and you're ultimately wanting him to go to the tree and bark at the tree? Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's bred into him. It's years and years of breeding, mm-hmm. uh, way before my time. But I'm I guess I'm lucky to get some of them, but... I've learned how to train them over the years, meeting people and up in the mountains in Tennessee and really all over the country. But we generally get them started by the time they're six months or year old at the latest. Chasing those squirrel tails. Yeah. And are you giving him a, uh, just reinforcing his good behavior? Or are you giving him a treat? Yeah, more or less. We generally don't touch these dogs too much till they treat. And then you praise him and uh, you know, rub him up, rub him on the head. Um, and we kind of... I got a little tube thing made up that we put a squirrel in. So he lives in there. He lives on one end like in a box like that. He comes through that tube to the other end and eats. And then pups, I put them in there so they kind of learn. And it, it, I mean, you can just see it like a light switch go off like that. They start looking up. Is it a clear smile. tube? Yeah, well, it's like wire. Oh, okay, okay, okay. About big as a five-gallon bucket. Mm-hmm. Kind of like a little maze, I guess you call mm-hmm. it. But And it's low to the ground over here, and then it comes up a tree kind of and then goes over so they looking at it because you don't want a dog looking on the ground when he's squirrel hunt how'd you catch a squirrel and get him in there i use dupe traps uh-huh. um, generally i got i have four before's <laughs> i have four before's probably 50 i'm on my property uh-huh. with a little short piece of two before on it hanging out like that yeah. and i put a five gallon bucket on the end of it with a lid and cut about a three inch hole in it right under the handle so when it rains or whatever uh, rain don't go in that hole too yeah. much Drill a couple of holes in the bottom, put about that much corn, sunflower seeds, or whatever you can get, like a, a peanut or something like that. And them squirrels go in that bucket. Hawks and hoot owls can't get him, so he's safe, and he'll sit there and gnaw on that corn. And it, In that bucket. And then the scent of that squirrel, he has to get on the ground to get on that board, you know, on that four before. And I'll walk through there with a Red Rider BB gun, do it like that, and just shoot that bucket, and if there's a squirrel in there... He'll come out like you shot him out of a Roman candle. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you do that, you got a you know one or two pups where you most time just yeah. walking through the woods. All of them focus on that racket. Yeah. And then that squirrel comes out, and it's only a couple times, and you got him going. <laughs> That's so pretty ingenious just, right there. It's just giving them an <laughs> opportunity to yeah. see it up close yeah. and smell it. And when they hear that racket, and then they associate that with what they've seen in that tube or what you showed them with that squirrel tail. And they don't take them long to catch on to it. And if you ever get one to do it, and there's two of them there, one of them's kind of lacking, they learn. it'll just take off. Then we separate them and hunt them by themselves. One-on-one. Hmm. Hmm. On one. Cool. How do you teach a dog to watch that squirrel and not let him tap the tree? It's bred into them most time. <clears throat> and they wherever a squirrel goes, it's just like a rat. He pees, drops a little pee everywhere. And that's how a dog will smell him a lot of times. When you, when you hear somebody say they wind in a squirrel, that's what they smell it. Huh. I've had some of them that, you know, a limb goes out from a tree, squirrel will be on the end of it, and I've had some of them that would wind that squirrel and be right under that squirrel, sitting down, looking up, barking. And you look up there and there's a squirrel right above. Wow. But it's just, they just bred into them. It's years and years of breeding. So uh, early on, you, you you mentioned that you'd had multiple dogs win the Mississippi State Championship, and you'd had multiple dogs win the World Squirrel Dog yeah. Championship. Well, it's several different things throughout the country, but um, just different dogs that we've trained over years. And I, I, like I was telling you, I've been blessed, I guess, that I've had more than one dog. They say in your lifetime you got one dog that's going to mm-hmm. be a dog that you always remember, but i got a bunch of them. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, so I've been blessed, I guess, doing it and having a knack for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, drive and all that stuff. But you got a good dog story you can tell us? I don't know. I, I've had so many, I guess. That, um, the different ones we've had, I've took people with. and um, I think I was telling you earlier, I've dogged a tree in there and had a couple commissioners with me, and they were shooting and acting crazy, couldn't hit nothing. And I pulled out a pistol. I got a, tell them, Bobby, I got a, a Browning Buckmark pistol. Got yeah. a 14 inch barrel on yeah. it. Pull that pistol out and a squirrel was running through a tree and jumped and I pulled that pistol out and pow, 
shot him right on the chin. <laughs> I, bet, I bet those guys. I got off with them because they one of them was bragging about he had a brand new Benelli shotgun mm. when they first come out. Super Black Eagle or whatever it was. He couldn't hit his butt with nothing. <laughs> but what he was doing, he was, you know, has two beads on the gun. He wasn't used to that. And he was just looking at that front bead and he was shooting about two feet above every squirrel mm-hmm. he shot at. Mm. And I got his gun and loaded it up. Next squirrel ran out and I shot it and handed it back to him. I said, ain't it's no good. wrong with your gun, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to have to get down on it. But it he, had, the um, arrow. It's the he had a bifocals. So yeah. when he got down on it, it messed him up. He couldn't see that other side. Till I showed him what he was doing, and then he realized. Till you hip shot one with a pistol. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that kind of that kind of got on that your skin the tone a little bit. Right there, that, yeah. Yeah. Have yeah. you ever trained dogs to to sell to other squirrel hunters? Yeah, I've sold a bunch of them all over the country. Okay. I've some big money, and you know, according to what you win with them, but um, generally these dogs, you're gonna pay twenty five hundred to twenty thousand dollars for one. Mm. Oh my goodness! That's, According that's to what they've won, like a, you know they've. Uh, I mean, labs. You know, I've seen duck high. dogs like you know. Man, dog dogs go. For it's a lot of time. And I'm telling you, you can train a dog. You can wear out a couple pair of boots. Yeah. You know, you ain't gonna just sit on the couch and watch uh, football. Yeah. And train one. You are gonna wear out a couple pair of boots. You got a lot of time. You, you. Everybody thinks that's a lot of money, but the time and effort you put into it is right. it's really not. Yeah, if you got years in it, that's right. Um, mm. I kind of want to go back to the you know, the public land thing and, and running into folks, do you uh, generally, do you think, you know, some of the areas you're squirrel hunting uh, may not have as many deer hunters? I, I know sometimes when I go out to the public woods, I can walk four or five miles and not see anybody. I That's just kind of way park we do, away but... from a truck and follow a drainage or whatever. Yeah, I try to be, I be respectful to other hunters. You know, if I see somebody parked there and I want to go there, I go somewhere else, you know. And uh, generally, I don't run into anybody. Because I kind of know the areas where I'm going. I don't just go running in on somebody on purpose and all that stuff. That's not the way we hunt. We be, you know, we respectful to other hunters. They deer hunter there. I respect his hunting just like he would respect mine. Yeah. So, uh, in theory, say you have Onyx. I don't know if you do or not. Oh yeah. But you should. <laughs> oh yeah. If I were to look at your Onyx, and I'm not going to look at your Onyx because I know that's personal. That cost you some money. That's right. <laughs> Are you marking those feed trees? Uh, yeah, or, general areas we'll mark like that on a GPS or a, on on X. So you know, like okay, I find this uh, native pecan, and it's a is a couple three of them there. So that's my hot spot, and that's mm-hmm. where I'm going to kind of clue in on them. Gotcha. But generally, you'll find you know those like you know what I'm talking about like a whole dry yeah, uh, a drain drove of them, them or yeah. drainage, um, and throughout the year you got to figure out what they're really eating on. A certain time of year they go eat those pecans. Certain areas you're going to go into, they'll be cutting cypress balls, mm-hmm. you know, around the edge of the water. Mm-hmm. You know, or pine cones. Pine cones, yeah. stuff like that. But you just find them hickory nuts, that's a that's a hot item because there's generally a whole drove of them there in that bottom. You just kind of work your way around, around the edge you know, steel it. hunting and stuff. Yeah. yeah. If you could pick a month, what would be your favorite month? December. 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 That's when the rut's going on. And do you think that is the same month? Like if you were to go further north, would that probably be? I in found November? it be about the same. It's okay. pretty close. Interesting. Uh, Never thought about that. Because I know you know we're here in Mississippi, but we yeah. got listeners all over. So I'm, yeah, I, I like I've said, I've been to Indiana, Illinois, Michigan. It's all. It's pretty much the same. And that's because the rut. Yeah, and there'll be multiple squirrels at one tree. Yeah, so you're using a dog then. Yeah, once the leaves get off. You know. Yeah, and he, once he probably trees one, there's multiple in there because they're. Yeah, because they'll be there. chasing. It might be eight or ten of them yeah. in one tree. Trying to secure that what? That one breeding, breeding opportunity. opportunity. There you go. <laughs> um, so, like, if you're in an area that's heavier in fox squirrels or something, you know, something, do you, is there a, a particular thing you change about the way you hunt? Um, generally, if you. Like where we live around the Bimble National Forest, I don't shoot any of those fox squirrels. I have people ask me that all the time. But I tree, well, my dog's probably 10 or 12, and I'll see 8 or 10, you know, still hunting, doing the barkers. But I generally don't shoot them. I don't hmm. Unless the only time I ever do is if I got a young dog that's just treed his first squirrel. Right. And, you know, they just ain't many of them left. Now, if you go over in the Delta, there's black and red ones over yeah, there. It's but- a lot different, you know, Delta fox squirrels, but we shoot every one of them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So you don't shoot fox squirrels generally? No, not the not the, uh, not the botners white or whatever. The yeah, white we, face yeah. I refer to them as hill fox yeah, squirrels. Hill but fox there's squirrels. a lot of different subspecies. Yeah, and they got the little white nose yeah. or black almost. People yeah. think they black till they see one of the black ones in the delta. Right. You know, it's totally different. Hmm. Interesting. 
and they feed on different stuff. You know, like a, the one, a hill fox squirrel, he's going to be around an open area, a pasture, where he can see. Yeah. And uh, generally you'll see them, they just kind of lope kind of through the woods. It's good on a dog because he's going to go a long ways before he'll go up a tree. And like a cat squirrel, a cat squirrel just going to run off the side of the road and go up a tree. Hmm. Hmm. I always wondered why they were called cat squirrels. Well, they kind of agile, I guess. They show them. agile. Jump and flip and everything else. Yeah, they're athletic. Now, over in the Delta, we kill some. We call them hot dogs because they're about this big, <laughs> about that long, and they wild. Them uh-huh. jokers, when dog trees them, you better be ready because he's going to be running. Little, yeah. little bitty. I mean, little cat bitty. Squirrel. I mean, they just not, not much bigger than a hot dog. That's why we always call them hot dogs. You know? mm. uh, but it's just different species. And like we go over to Delta, sometimes we use a four wheeler side by side. It can be snowing like last year, all the sleet and stuff we was having. I just put that dog in front of that side by side and blow a whistle. He'll get in front of it. And you just ease along, keep your guns in the case and be legal. And he'll tree right off the side of that road. I can uh, get into that. Yeah. <laughs> well, last year we, me, I had a couple boys with me and we killed 28, I think it was. Wow. And we, I bet you we didn't walk 200 yards all evening. Hmm. And we went 25 miles just riding, easing along on them road. The Looking for that track. And and those fox squirrels, like I said, they like an open area. If there's a road there and you know, why is this room or a little wider? Those squirrels hang out there. They like to get where they can see. A fox squirrel just like that. I don't know. It's just it's what I've figured out over the years. They like a where they can see or a little pasture area. A little well, that's open interesting. Areas. We've been working on this place, this prairie place, and uh, have just been in the open open fields and seen a bunch of fox squirrels. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's where you'll see him. You know, a gray squirrel, you don't hardly see him around no pasture. Mm-hmm. He's so scared of a hog and hoot owl, he's kind of like yeah. he's on, all nervous. Yeah, you ever heard that of... story about the squirrel dog with no legs? Yeah, pushing in a wheelbarrow till he struck a deer. Yeah. Have you heard that, Lanny? I have not heard it. It's a great story. True, true story, isn't it? I've heard that. Yeah. True story. This guy You're had saying a, this is a true story. Had, guy had a squirrel dog, didn't have any legs, had been in some kind of accident. And no, not it, near one leg. Not one, not even one <laughs> leg. And they, have you heard this, Mike? And they would, he, they would push it, roll him around in a in a wheelbarrow, and he'd bark and treat squirrels. And this guy <laughs> offered him a bunch of money for it. I mean, the guy didn't want to sell him, and he just kept on raising the price because this dog was so good. So he let him take the dog and hunt him. And the guy did he come with a wheelbarrow? He then? came back, brought, <laughs> came back without the dog. But had the wheelbarrow, and he just his clothes were all cut up, and he was bleeding. And the guy said, "What in the world? Where's my dog? What in the world happened?" He said, "Well, you know how good that dog is at tree and squirrels. If he ever jumps a deer, you can't you can't stop him." <laughs> hey, thanks, Richie. We got a sound effect for that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Straight from the Ponderosa, <laughs> it's Bobby Cole. <laughs> Oh, these guys. Uh, that was like, pretty good. Yeah, yeah, that's a good Matt, thing. Matt didn't even laugh at that. I love it. He's, <laughs> He's still laughing. Bad. Bobby's still laughing Bobby's over still the laughing dead laugh. Nobody dead. else is. I I'm can't not, believe y'all have never heard that. I'm story. not good at getting jokes, so <laughs> yeah. I'm just kind of laughing at the situation. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, oh. it wasn't that funny. <laughs> <laughs> so you told me that one of the reasons you got into hunting with dogs is you picked up Lyme disease. Ooh. Yeah, about probably 15 years ago, I was up in the mountains in Tennessee training dogs and got bit by some ticks. Didn't know anything about it. We'd spray down, but we didn't, not with permethrin like you do now with sawyers or anything. We were just using deep woods off like right. we always use, spray, keep mosquitoes off of you. And uh, got bit, come on home, didn't think nothing about it. A couple of days later, I woke up feeling real. I mean, like I've been been on a little drunk or something, mm-hmm. you know, and your head's hurting, your hands cramping and everything went to the doctor and down here i think the doctors don't really know that much about it because uh, it's not real yeah used to it was very uncommon uh, but being that i went all over the country and i tried to tell the guy that i said look i've been in tennessee i think i got bit by a tick it might be something bad and i showed him my leg had a bullseye you know on your leg yeah they kind of blew it off and a couple of days later i couldn't hardly breathe and i went to the emergency room and they gave me some like doxycycline, mm-hmm. whatever, a couple rounds of that. But by then, I think it had got so bad that it started affecting my breathing and my heart and stuff like that. So um, now I still have problems from it. I was telling Bobby, that's why I don't competition hunt anymore because the 
you get fatigued a lot, mm-hmm. you know, and tired and depressed because you're hurting all the time. Uh, but it affects your joints, uh, nerve system and stuff. So you're still fighting it. Oh, yeah. Hear oh, that? look at love. Every, everything on me pops and snaps and all that. So, huh. But I still go at it best I can. If I get tired, I sit down and take me a break. What did your hand? Uh, That's all your joints. You can see how my fingers and stuff swelled up. Everything on you just so, pop. Arthritis is what it leads to. So how long was it between the time you got bitten and the time you started showing symptoms? Probably a couple of days, I think, mm, best I can quick, remember. Yeah. yeah. And even though you had the doxycycline, it it, it didn't. It had done. The guy told me it had got in your was, blood. Or yeah, it had been in there. And I, you know, it, I think it can affect people differently. Everybody, yeah. it yeah. affects yeah. them different. Like, you know, That's what autoimmune the, illness. It you know sometimes you just and it don't hides quite understand. From it. what I understood, the guy that finally figured this out that told me what the deal was uh, that Lyme disease little deal like a sperm almost it goes mm-hmm. in your blood cell. And the only way they see it is they see that tail wiggle on it, from huh. what I understand, uh, what the guy told me. And that's how they figure out that something's going on, you know. Yeah, right. Because it, uh, it'll affect you bad, I'm telling you. You don't want none of that. Well, I'll tell you what. It's uh, it's almost seems like once a week now we hear somebody with a, some kind of um, vector tick-borne illness. So. Now, I've had a couple of friends get bit, and they couldn't eat red meat and stuff that's but alpha I, that gal. wasn't yeah, yeah. it wasn't that's pretty that's I, we probably hear more about alpha gal now than anything yeah i would say because i've seen several guys that i knew was they pretty big old boys you know and it, they kind of dried up almost they can eat mm-hmm. nothing but fish max mom has it my sister has it uh dudley i know you know somebody with it oh yeah several yeah. people oh yeah fred's a pony uh, our mossy Oak properties guy here in town i mean i i won't if if i don't have treated stuff on i i won't Get out of the truck. Yeah, and don't need to. If you uh, look at me and you see my hands and hear all that, yeah, take my advice. Spray all your clothes with permethrin or Sawyer's, um, and it lasts, you know, four or five times on your washing. Just fill on there, and deer can't smell it once you let it dry. You know, if you scared the deer, gonna smell you. Some people's kind of yeah. crazy about that. I yeah, people for... are worried about snakes, but I think the you know, way, number of incidences with ticks, with ticks is yeah. way higher. Ah, yeah. Well, and, it, and people don't burn the woods anymore. Oh, yeah. we're we trying to, but yeah, not enough people do. But not enough people do, mm-hmm. you know. And a lot of times, these little pine replants and stuff, that's just a breeding ground, you know. Yeah, we've had some uh, guys in here, and we talked specifically about these uh, vector born. And it's um, it, one thing is the, the there's more white tailed deer now than ever, you know, and mm-hmm. there's one of the main things that they breed, although they can't get them. Uh, and then there's more rodents. Uh, more rodents. And, you know, it's got, I think, well, and it's got about a rat, dog, and. Mm-hmm. Him or something like that. Yeah, in the nymph stage, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, Mac, you got a question? Yeah, back to your setups on the squirrels. Yeah. Um, so, how long are you going to sit at a spot? How much are you going to call at that spot? I mean, are you calling like you're, you know, hunting a goblin turkey? Or uh, you, you, you don't want to get too crazy with it, you know, because to me, you can uh, give yourself away. Mm-hmm. You kind of want to let them know you're there, but not let you know let you want them, them looking for you yeah and they'll get to talking to you and you just kind of mimic just what he does just like i was doing with that while ago you just hold it down and i figured out like you hold it by your side it can't see your hand but it muffles it enough to and you just do that kind of back and forth with him and he'll answer you and then you'll hear multiple ones answer you and like i said most time when they one of them comes to you it's a male What's the timeline from the time they answer, like average for them, for you to see them? Or how long are you waiting until you I move usually spots? sit there, you know, five, 10, 15 minutes. By then, there's so many squirrels out in the woods, you're going to be ready to move and go over here, or generally go to an area where you're going to see that feed tree where they're cutting that a lot, and you're just easing that area. Then I just sit down there for 15, 20 minutes. By then, I done killed a couple, and you want to move on and find some more does the gunshot affect things a little bit but generally when you still hunt i use cb shorts mm-hmm. and i've killed five or six out of one area you know before you get up and move yeah you hear that a lot folks using those uh, cb caps and the yeah and, or a or a suppressor well like my brother he uses a suppressor and it it helps a lot, but it's still got that crack if you use a long rifle. Yeah. Um, he'll use longs or either uh, subsonic rounds in there. So what uh, what range do you sight your rifle in at? About 50 yards or 22. And you just shoot it enough that you know the 
Yeah, if you the you elevation. can kind of tell, you know, if you've been in the woods enough, you're gonna tell. Ah, that's about sixty yards, and you can generally it's gonna drop, you know, about that much. Yeah, about an inch or two. Yeah, and it, I have shot some at a hundred yards, or shooting rabbits like on a power line, or I've had friends that's got these big food plot stuff. That's what I like to do in February is go out and shoot rabbits off that. So mm-hmm. yeah, we learned a lot about shooting twenty twos when we were kids. We we set the rifle up on a picnic table yeah. and shoot at stumps in the lake a long way off and well if, if you can get you a piece of pipe about three foot tall hammer it in the ground you know and zero it in at 50 and shoot that pipe aim at the top of it and you see about how far you'll fall that's what i try to do when we were teenagers and kids that's what we would do to try to get your trajectory to just right and you know how far to hold up or down mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and see if you can hit that like a one inch piece of old metal pipe Cause if you off much more than that, you're gonna miss the squirrel. But his right. head ain't, you know, ain't very big. Anyway. And your head shooting them. I like to shoot them in the ear. Yeah. In don't mess ear, up. Man. Don't mess up no meat. That's right. You can tell I like to eat. Yeah. yeah. What What's I your like favorite to... way to cook them? Uh, we generally boil them like crab boil in a pressure cooker about 20 minutes, and then take them out of that and batter them and fry them. Oh. And uh, just like hot and spicy chicken at Popeyes. Something oh like man! Like, I'm gonna have to try that. Just that liquid crab boil. Yeah. Gives it a little bit of kick. Yeah. Uh, but generally but that the tenderizes one, it too. Yeah, and then I mean twenty minutes. If you do it thirty or more, it's, it's gonna just off. come off the bone. That's when you want to make a gumbo or some type of soup or something with it. But yeah, squirrel and I think rabbit, you you kinda need to do the same if, same you're, gonna, thing. if you're gonna fry it, you you yeah. parboil it to loosen it up a little bit. If yeah, you just but, dropped it in the fryer, it would be like, chewy. You a pull chewy. You, <laughs> some of them you can it's tender when you eat it, but then some of them's kinda older and tough, kinda yeah. like a buck deer, you know, you wanna tenderize them a little bit. But, Doing the same thing when you pressure cook them. Hmm. Uh, the People you... get squeamish about squirrel, but it is just a mild. I That's mean, it, great. It, yeah. yeah. That's the chicken of the tree. Yeah. <laughs> the That's tree. what we call it. You let them soak in the water, you know, in a dish pan or something a couple of days yeah. and change that water out. Yeah. And uh, that's good. Hot and spicy squirrel, fried squirrel sounds But see, good. the ones you, ones you don't eat that day, you take the next day and make you a tomato gravy. And drop them in there and kind of simmer it and warm them back up mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. over some rice, biscuits. Mm-hmm. Come my, on. As my dad mm-hmm. would say, that'll make a hog hug a hound. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a uh, another question. So if you're looking at, I mean, like you said, I mean, some of these forests you're hunting in are 180,000 acres. Yeah. What are you looking for on a map, like in an aerial view? I mean, uh, just a hardwoods? Uh, yeah, generally looking on Onyx or your Garmin's and stuff like we use. You're going to find a, like a little creek bottom. You're going to know about where the hardwoods are. Mm-hmm. And like the good thing about Onyx, you can go in there and find specific trees you want to find, like hickories or pecan yeah. or whatever. Yeah. You can you know get in on that certain tree and then make you a mark on there. Put your squirrel on it, a little sign <laughs> on it. And uh, generally when we go there, that's where we're going to be sitting at daylight and start off. At, you're going to have you two or three places. Because generally you're going to have a bottom. Yeah. You know, a river system or a creek or a little drainage ditch or something. So you hunt until lunch? Yeah, about 10, 11 o'clock, come out, and generally we'll cook something to eat on the tailgate, yeah. a little grill or something. Uh, sit around for an hour or two, skin the squirrels, go back that evening. The evening hunting, to me, is better. Uh, they they tend to talk more. Yeah. Now, the gray squirrels, you'll kill them barking all morning. Fox squirrels, they only going to bark majority of the time morning and afternoons. Mm-hmm. Uh, a little bit different. They're a little lazy. They don't want to get up too early. Yeah. <laughs> so you're just doing the same tactics just in the afternoon? Same thing. Yeah. Just sit down, find, and it's easier in the evening because you can find them, hear them barking and go in there and just sit up, and, you know, sit there 15, 20 minutes. You're going to see them moving and you can kind of talk to them a little bit. They'll do, come out. And do you think that, that call, say, you know, One's at 60, you can get him 10 yards closer to get him oh, in yeah. range. That's when what you get him in the range, you, yeah. especially when you do that. Uh, he's going to come on in a little bit. Oh, yeah, he's looking. He's getting mad. <laughs> he want to whip somebody. <laughs> so you've got a group of folks. And so, like, if you hunt that morning and y'all don't, whatever you're shy of the limit, that's yeah. what you'll go back that afternoon. Yeah. And after. generally we take those kids and let them do a good bit of shooting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, with twenty two, and I set them up like my little grandson's going with me this weekend, his first trip to the Delta. We camp out and stuff, but I carry a little old polecat thing, and I let him put his rifle on it, shoot it. He shoots mine, but I let him shoot it at home and practice before we go. 
Yeah. So it's not just him you know, get the gun. It, it don't work. We safety all the time. Yeah. So y'all dump camping and, yeah. and hunting from the camp, hunting from the truck or yeah, hunting yeah. from the truck. Generally, where we camp at, you can just leave the camp. And take off. Take off. That's cool. Man, that's great. That's come, good stuff. Go hunting. Come back to the truck. Yeah. Have some snacks. Yeah. Sit around. Socialize. Hang up in a hammock. That's yeah. my kind of hunting right there. Campfire at night and do yeah. it again the next morning. That's what we do. What's the biggest mistakes you like you taking a bunch of folks? What's some things that you would you teach a beginner, I guess, some of the few things that stick out to you? Um, generally, these kids, we'd show them how to read compasses and stuff like that. But the main thing is learn how to slip and sneak in the woods. A lot of people don't take it serious. They just go trampling through the woods and them squirrels, they can see you and hear you as far as any turkey in the woods. So you just you want to teach them to be real stealthy through the woods and read the sign if you see cuttings of different kind of acorns, like Daly saying he's showing them you know coon crap or whatever mm-hmm. in the woods. They learning something all the time. Keeps them interested. That's generally what we do. So that squirrel, he's got, he's worried about a hawk or an owl, oh, and he's yeah. worried about a bobcat, maybe oh, a yeah. coyote or you know, he, rattlesnake, stuff like that. Too. He's got a lot to pay attention to. That's why he's so nervous <laughs> most of the time, because time he's born, they something after him. About like a baby turkey or something, you know. Nosler suppressors are made for hunting. Adding a Nosler suppressor to your rifle will make you a quieter, more accurate, and more effective hunter. Protect your hearing and disturb less game with a Nosler suppressor. The time to hunt quiet is now. Learn more at Nosler.com. The Furminator is the industry's most versatile piece of food plot equipment, allowing plotters to do every step of the process, working the soil, adding seed and soil supplements, and compacting. From start to finish, with a single implement, it's hassle-free by design. Set it for the seed size and simply drive the tractor and the Furminator does the rest. Check it out at theferminator.com. Why is it when you go deer hunting, you see a whole bunch of squirrels, and, and then, you know, when you actually go squirrel hunting, they, they seem to just disappear? How and do I, it know? And I get tickled at people when I go to these trade shows selling calls and stuff, but they say, oh, man, I got all kinds of squirrels in my place. I had 25 at a feeder. And they think when you go there, you're going to kill all 25 of them. That's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. You might kill one or two, and then they all gone. Come back by a couple of hours, they might be back out. But Yeah. You just ain't gonna eradicate them like everybody thinks you're no, going to. No. What should we be asking you? What are we? What are we missing here? Uh, generally, you know, like we go all over the south. I've been all over the country, but every parts of the country, you're gonna have to focus on different feed trees, or terrain, different stuff like that. And you know, a lot of people don't really get into it like we do to really find those feed trees or look on onyx a lot of people don't even know about onyx right you know people that hunt especially those tree layers yeah right. and it's it's a good way to find where you want to start at anyway mm-hmm. you know and you can weed your way through stuff mm-hmm. what state has the best squirrel dogs uh probably tennessee tennessee that's where the majority of them started or originated from the ones we have anyway they different kinds different dogs you know some people use hounds some people use i got original mountain curves and mountain fast what we use hmm. but some people cross them back and forth with hounds and curs and just whatever you like i guess i don't like when it barks on the ground i like when it when he barks there's a squirrel there gotcha and use their eyes ears all their senses so when he got yours go to bark and there's gonna be a squirrel oh, this is red, get your gun ready he ain't gonna lie what is it Marcel. Marcel. That's right. <laughs> the one thing coon. that monkey hates worse than a raccoon is a lion's coon dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's always a funny story. That's a funny story. That's for sure. Well, I tell you what. So uh, you've got a call company. Yeah. Swamp Boy Custom Calls. Yeah. That's been my nickname since I was a kid because we hunted so much. Yeah. Uh, and then we had a couple of friends of mine in school. That's what everybody kind of called us because we went camping and hunting all the time yeah. instead of going tearing up streets i guess i understand that that's um, where i was but that's where we that's where my nickname come from but that's kind of where i got the name for that do they not have a barber down there in stringer no uh <laughs> well they did that's what this is about most of the time uh i had a guy where we lived that my dad would take us to get a haircut and it was like the skin was the pattern yeah and this guy had clippers the old school like you do your hands like that and well by the time we went on saturday he'd been cutting hair all week when you got your hair cut, it was, uh, see if I can find something, about like it red on that mossy oak right there. <laughs> Top of your head would be red. <laughs> it pulled it, it out. It pulled more out. And I remember being 
12 or 13 years old and I went over there and this guy, he kind of drank pretty bad. And when you'd get there, he'd go outside and drink him up. He called them stove pipes, a big 24 ounce Miller high life. <laughs> and, get ready and to being a little there. kid, you're sitting up there like that in a chair and this guy goes out and you can see him through the window in the mirror and all. He turned that beer up and just, <laughs> just guy was down, <laughs> crush it and he'd come back in there, but he'd be shaking when you got there. And then he drank that beer and his old hand would get steady. But he pulled more hair out in the <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, me and my brother and my dad went over there and we got a haircut. Boy, and I remember I, he about pulled every bit of hair I had out. <laughs> and my head was red, just about bleeding. And I was in the floorboard of the truck. I was so mad. And I told my dad, I said, if I ever get out of your house, I'll never get another haircut. <laughs> and you can see, it has <laughs> been a while. That's great. That's a great story. Yeah, uh, it is. Wow. <laughs> That's the longest ponytail. We've had guys with ponytails come in here. Yeah, I watched one the other day. You'll yeah, have the guy too. with Oh, Jimmy. Yeah. Yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy Styles. Yeah, yeah. yeah you got nice. a you got a foot on Jimmy. I think. He's got a lot better story. Why he got long hair too than anybody? <laughs> and he I get, got I tortured get, to death as a child. I'm telling you, it was rough. <laughs> <laughs> and couple, about five or six years ago, the man passed away, and my dad called me and he said, uh, "Hey, what are you doing?" I said, oh, "I'm going hunting." He said, uh, "I just wanted to let you know your favorite barber passed away today." <laughs> Still ain't cut my hair. I said, "No, it ain't gonna happen." <laughs> How about that? Uh, but I get picked at and stuff all the time so it don't written bobby was asking about that earlier but i go bobby home. likes he's to pick jealous. on people he's just jealous yeah. is what uh, it is. i told him i'd sell him a little bit fill in and on the <laughs> <Yeah>. top <laughs> <laughs> i could do him a little bit <laughs> i need it <laughs> and I, I get tickled at people when i go squirrel hunting with them or something i get out and sometimes i put my hair up in my hat yeah so people don't really know i got long hair because if you see a picture of you don't see all that but uh and they get tickled at me because uh, I take that hat off and they go, man, I went hunting with a guy who got hair longer than my wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my that's good. Dudley, why don't you do uh, why don't you do your rapid fire? Yeah, show? all right. Well, we've, we've answered a lot of these questions, but it'll it'll still be fun, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah, it's rapid okay, fire. So. We ask you a bunch of questions. Dudley okay. does real fast. It's brought to you by our friends at Springfield Armory. Armory yeah. The makers of that twenty model 2020. I'd like to shoot that thing. Yeah, yeah. me too. Sure right. we get a sample. Yeah. It would be well, good. You know, Rusty's got one. Oh, well, imagine that. <laughs> yeah, well, I have, to, yeah, yeah. I have to borrow that. Surely Bobby will get a sample. Yeah, surely Bobby will get a sample. Yeah. All right. So have you uh, have you heard of this before, the rapid fire Yeah, question? I'll watch your show a little bit. Okay, oh, cool. so uh, I'm going to ask you these real quick. We're just trying to get to know you a little better. All right. And, uh, so are you ready? I go ahead. All right. Turnip greens, mustard greens, or collard greens? Turnip greens. Mm. Cathead biscuits or cornbread? Cathead biscuits. Squirrel stew or squirrels and gravy? Squirrel and gravy. Hunt with leaves or hunt without leaves? Both. Ah. <laughs> Hickory nuts or pine cones? Hickory nuts. Uplands or bottomlands? Bottom. Red oaks or white oaks? Red oaks. Delta fox squirrels or hill fox squirrels? Delta. Rimfire or shotgun? Rimfire. Dogs or no dogs? Both. <laughs> and, and last but not least, three. Vidal Sassoon, Suave Shampoo, or Herbal Essences? Suave. Suave. <laughs> nice. That was good. Good job. Suave. Suave. I think, is it Suave or Suave? It's Suave, but I like Suave, suave better. Much better. That's kind of like... That's what we uh, always called it. Suave. Yeah, Suave. <laughs> Now, on uh, squirrels, I learned this from a biologist. I want to see if any of y'all know this. Okay. When a male squirrel breeds a female, you know what he leaves in there? Yeah. Well, I would. Well, so there's a little cap. There's a little. There's a little crust that forms <laughs> a little waxy something. It's wax. That, a waxy thing that. So then another squirrel comes comes around. So that they can diversify the litter, yeah. and hit and his uh, male part pulls out that crust. Yeah, it's wait, like a wax, wait, like, a, wax. like a wax plug, basically. A, a biologist told me this, and I've I've asked people that all the time, and they look at me like you crazy, like you was doing when yeah. you said crust. <laughs> <laughs> but if you when you clean a male squirrel, everybody thinks it's semen, but as his back end back there, you'll see a little circle. Uh -huh. You take your knife or a little pair of scissors and snip at and just mash it, and it looks like paraffin wax. Hmm. But it's, when he does that, after he breeds her, it keeps it pure. So, so he's stopping it up. Plug, yeah. Put the, the plug, plug in it. Put the plug in it. Yeah. And then the, and the <laughs> other squirrel comes in and removes the plug and puts his in? Tries to. Some of them do and some of them can't. Huh. That's pretty so neat. They can I, have litters that are 
uh, fertilized by multiple males. Some of them do, but majority of them is going to be that one male. Yeah, that's keeps what I would it more think. pure. Yeah. The birds, and the, the, the birds and the bees of squirrels by Jeffrey Wood. There yeah. you go. Huh. Yeah, Interesting. He's telling the truth. And I, I've never heard that. That's, that's, that's I show people that all the time. Yeah. They, They'll plug it up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Mac, why don't you do the trivia question? So we always ask a trivia question. One of our listeners can win a prize if you get this right. Uh-huh. Or if you get it wrong, they'll probably they'll still probably win. They'll probably still win, so don't worry. Probably get it wrong. <laughs> all right, Mr. Wood. So you're playing for Tom Mad 10, and uh, it's a set of dog proof, uh, Duke dog proof traps. Oh, that's right? awesome. That's a good thing. That's, that's our friends trip. at Duke Traps. Yeah. All right, so this is a true or false each August, billions of birds rally themselves for a long, dangerous migration south. With an abundant foods offered by the summer breeding season now dwindling in the supply, these animals must face an exhausting long-haul flight to warmer and safer lands. Some species, like the striking cedar waxwing, might only move a few hundred miles. Others, like the arctic tern, could cover 55,000 miles in just a month and a half. For most bird species, migration is the deadliest part of life. True or false, most bird species migrate at night. True. Nailed it. How about that? I was going to complain about it not being about squirrels, but he nailed it. How about that? (laughs) Did y'all know that most birds migrate at night? I actually know. I've heard that before. That's why I kind of thought it on ducks especially. You know, they, and if you watch those squirrel, um, squirrel, I'm on squirrels, bird <laughs> migration maps, and it's pretty interesting to see how many more get to moving at night. Yeah, Bobby showed me like a live map. It is amazing to watch. Bird cast, I think, yeah, was the it's name really cool. Yeah. It's really cool. Did y'all hear about the guy that spent a couple years ago? He killed a duck over in the Delta, I think, and it come from Japan or somewhere. Oh, a mallard, good, a pintail, a pintail, I think it was. Huh. It had a ban on it from Japan, and they were saying how it got in the uh, airstream and just cruised on over. What about that, Rob? That's pretty wild. Pretty wild. And I was like, that's a long that's way, dude. That's a long dude. way. I bet he wore out even though he didn't uh, they said it didn't. <laughs> From what I understood, once they get up there, they don't really yeah. flap that much. They just huh. put his goggles on, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I hadn't heard about that. I had to look wild. into that. Well, Mike, why don't you fact check that for us? Wow. Well, look, what are we forgetting to ask him? I don't know. I've enjoyed the conversation, that's for sure. Squirrels are something that, that you know, we shouldn't overlook. No, it's just a no, it's great a, recreational I know we've talked about it a lot, but the kids, taking kids squirrel hunting, as, as he was saying, teaches them so many, so much of the fundamentals. Not only safety, but just, I mean, spotting and stalking and, and walking quietly. Different, and, different and what, tree species, yeah. what to look for right. when you're looking for feed trees or little sounds like we make with the barkers mm-hmm. and stuff. And kids love that because they can make that sound and oh, then yeah. that squirrel answers them. That gets them fired yeah. up. Well, they yeah. get all fired up, you know, almost like a big buck done walked out on them, you know. Did, right. and did I understand right? So with your call company, you also make a squirrel skinning rack? Yeah, like a little skinning rack. Um, I actually won one of these about 30 years ago at a squirrel hunt, and I had it for years, and I finally called the guy one day and talking to him about it, and he said, man, I quit making that thing a long time ago. And if you want it, I'll just give it, give you the little patent he had on it, whatever. And I started making some of them. And uh, if you look on YouTube, You'll see me skinning a squirrel, and I can do it pretty good. I bet I've skinned you can. a few. Yeah, I bet you have. What uh, was that page on YouTube? Is it's it? a Swamp Boy Custom Calls. Let's check that out. And, uh, and there's the Japanese but, pintail. Look, look at, at that. that. Yeah. Yeah, so it's killed in Washington State. Wow. Look at that. It was banded in downtown Tokyo. Yeah, something like I, I remember hearing about that. How far it had traveled and stuff like that. But I, think, was cruising I was thinking now. there was a guy in the Delta. There was in uh, 2008, a yeah. duck, uh, an eight-year-old duck that was banded in Japan was yeah. killed on the Mississippi River. Yeah. Wow. Thank you, Mac. That may be the first time he's fact-checked anything. <laughs> 180 podcasts in, and we get a fact check. Good job, man. Good job, go. Mac. That's incredible. It's pretty neat. Absolutely. We, we now, say nature's it. amazing. Now, how do y'all skin a squirrel? I do the make the slit yeah, below the tail, take his pajamas one. off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the way I used to do it. I've all, you seen seen the way I skin one with that little skinning rack thing? You'll be done with it. You'll that. quit that. Yeah. Yeah. No bending over, because uh, I've killed in front of my dogs. Man, another boy and had some guys hunt with. We killed sixty three one day. Hmm. So when you clean that many, you'll figure out a way to do it. Use catfish skinners and little scissors. 
and a good sharp knife. Cut sure. it like you, same way you talking about deadlining. So you're not talking about cutting them in the middle and like no, undressing them. Get too much hair on them. Yeah, yeah I don't like problem. eating hair. I mm-hmm. like eating meat. And it's tough. It's to get hard the hair to get the hair off a squirrel. Yeah, but generally we sell the tails, the melt spinners, and, and I sell them to people make crappie jigs and stuff. But uh, we usually cut them like Dudley's talking about around his tail back there and cut the little tendons and the two where his tail's gonna flick. Cut that tail off. Cut his feet off behind those scent glands. The squirrel's mm-hmm. got scent glands up on his paw there. Cut that off, and I grab them with catfish skinners and pull that hide down. Oh, oh one swipe, one and swipe. it comes down. And then that skinning rack we do, you just bump the little spring-loaded deals, and then I got a rack where his head will go in, throw his head up there. Just like you're skinning a catfish, it's got that V on it when you pull his uh-huh. hide off, and then you just pull that off his feet, and I put him back in there, and I quarter him up just like you would a deer. Huh. And I'll take the front shoulders off and gut him and take all that flank meat that ain't really any good. Right. Take that down, and I take those scissors and cut right above his rib cage, throw that part away, and then cut right by his hips. Uh-huh. You got the backbone tender loin, mm-hmm. and then cut on each side of that tailbone, throw the butthole and all that junk mm-hmm. away, and then cut those legs. And don't poke in your bags, yeah. anything like that. Cause, what about, uh, well, a lot of the old-timers here hate squirrel brains and eggs. No, that no. ain't for me. I kill enough meat, I don't have to eat the brains. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't eat organs either. I was just wondering. Now, I, now I got a lot of older men. They get mad at me because I shoot them in the head. Yeah. But I'll clean them several throughout the year we shoot with a shotgun yeah. now they can have all that they want yeah it's pretty uh, popular with the older yeah crowd. a lot of older people but they had to do it because they was making every part of that yeah, squirrel eight, useful you yeah know? yeah hmm. uh, but uh when Does, you clean like last year i cleaned 47 and a half gallon no ziplock bags i don't eat brain <laughs> I like this hot and spicy fried yeah. squirrel. <laughs> that did sound delicious. Oh, it does. It? Yeah. yeah. And when you say Popeyes, you had me interested. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's got a little kick to it, but now you can get it too hot. <laughs> uh, we like a little kick now. Yeah, that's uh, for sure. But it's it's good. It gives a little bite and a little mm-hmm. kick to it. Yeah. We might get you to write that recipe up, and then we'll publish it in the magazine. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. You know, a lot of people don't use a recipe, uh, but I generally don't. But I just I grew up doing it. My grandmother taught us about it. Uh, rabbits and squirrels same yeah. way she would use crushed red pepper stuff like that but it's over the years oil. and i just use that liquid crab oil and it gives it a little red tint yeah kind of pink looking yeah we we need to do that squirrel recipe and we need to do ricky's uh boiled peanut recipe yeah that'd yeah. be great yeah and i i'm just fascinated by this the the screening apparatus that you've got and yeah. all that we probably need to maybe sh- now, figure out link link away so people can see that now what i do is i got mine one of them mounted on my receiver hitch i take over receiver hitch and i welded a one inch square tubing on it came up and then i mount I, when we made these brackets the little skinning racks it's made to go on a six by six pole you can put it on a shop or something but it's made to go on a six by six pole mm-hmm. you just lag bolt it on there and it's kind of recessed off of there but I do that and put it on the receiver hitch in my truck. When I get through hunting, I tie my dog, or if I'm still hunting, I just put my stuff down and slide that in the receiver hitch, and I clean my squirrels right there in the woods while they generally when they're warm. Yeah. A little bit easier. Get them cooling off, too. Throw all those parts away, and you get home, you got your bag full of squirrels. Hmm. Heck yeah. I like it. And I don't I think I'm going to pick up my bow this year. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go squirrel hunting. I'm going squirrel hunting this weekend for sure. I well, mean, it was, a, it was a big thing when we grew up, but it's generally, nowadays it's not like that too much, but I wish we could get back to it more. I, I don't see many kids out hunting anymore yeah. like we used to, but. Mine will, mine will go by himself sometimes. I might let my hair grow out in the back. I yeah, boy, I'll be serious now. Let her grow. <laughs> let her do it. <laughs> well, this has been really interesting. Barely really has. We appreciate you driving yeah, all the way up for being here. here. Thank y'all for having yeah, me. Yeah, absolutely. So the guys can go to uh, Swamp Boys Custom Calls. Dot com. And they can learn about you a little bit about you that you make turkey calls, and turkey deer. calls, deer grunts, uh, coyote stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I love shooting coyotes and calling them up too. So mm. I gotta so, have me one of them squirrel calls. Yeah, we need uh, Richie. Uh, we need to consider a hunt. figuring out a way to do a TV show with him and his dogs. Might as well, or yeah. squ- or uh, still hunt or something. But yeah, I yeah, think yeah. It'd be, yeah, it'd be both. Really good. Both. Yeah, 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 yeah. A little bit of everything. Yeah, let's make that happen, Rich. Yes, sir. I sure will. We're going to your place. I don't have a place, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll thin them out for you. Yeah. yeah. Right. Jeffrey Wood, we appreciate you being here. Yeah, thank y'all for having me. Yes, really sir. enjoyed it. Good stuff. This was yep. a fun one. It yep. Was. All right. Anybody got any concluding thoughts or anything? Uh, take your kids hunting. Take them squirrel hunting. Take them squirrel yeah. hunting. 
That's right. Keep well, them off the couch and in yeah, the woods. That's right. The yeah. day the squirrel went berserk. That's a good one too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that'll make that's you laugh. That's down in Pascagoula, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> when it crossed, oh, her, what, it crossed her garters and thighs or something. Yeah. yeah. I can't believe y'all didn't like the story of the squirrel, the legless squirrel dog. <laughs> that was one of your worst jokes uh, ever, I have to tell you. Wank, wank, like the, the whole wank. peanut gallery is, yeah, that's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You got to be a squirrel dog man to laugh that. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> Well, why don't you say goodbye, Dudley? Goodbye, Dudley. Get us out of here, Richie. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of the Gamekeeper Podcast. And be sure to tune in again. Subscribe to Gamekeeper Farming for Wildlife magazine. And don't miss the Mossy Oak Properties Fistful of Dirt podcast with my good buddy, Ronnie Cuz Strickland.